Hi. As part of a new series of videos at Bravo, uh, we thought we'd try and give you a bit more detail on how more complex apps are put together. Um, so in this video, it's kind of give you an overview of the way different tools can integrate with Bravo to, to build some pretty complex workflows within an application and how those, some of those things fit together. This isn't a sort of step-by-step -step tutorial. We've got lots of materials to do that on the website for each of the different tools. But I thought one thing we don't really do enough of is probably give you that overview of how it all fits um, and works well um, together. So um, that's what I'm going to try and do here. Um, so, uh, without any further ado, let's get just let's get going. Okay, so what is this app all about? Um, we built this app to kind of really showcase what was possible for uh, content creators. You know, we see a number of use of our users of Bravo uh, building applications, mobile applications, to really reach their their users um, and, and deliver their content. And they've built up a lot of content, whether it's uh, with um, you know, personal training videos, recipes, or, or, or even meditation sessions. Um, and what we wanted to do was kind of showcase how that could be put together and the different tools we use. So um, in terms of what's specifically in this application, uh, it's got authentication with Firebase, so you can log in uh, with email and password or with Google. Um, it's got the design is in Figma, um, as many uh, applications are in Bravo. Um, for content, we're storing things in base row, which is very similar to Airtable. Um, we're also adding um, some functions in a tool called Napkin. What Napkin does is it lets you build small bits of code to fill in the gaps um, when you're dealing with APIs. And it's very helpful when you want to reformat uh, API requests or just do certain functionality. So I'll, I'll go through that as well. Um, and then um, finally, we're using Revenue Cat to do the in-app purchasing. In terms of what the application does, uh, it's got, you know, as, as I mentioned, you obviously log in. We've got a uh, post login flow, which basically allows you to collect profile information. And then it's got a list of um, meditation sounds and sessions, uh, as well as the ability to bookmark those um, and add them to your profile. So it's, it's, it's relatively simple, but it's very, very much along the lines of the sorts of things that uh, a content creator would have, want to have in their application. Okay, so the first thing I want to go through is uh, the Figma design. Right, now in this design, you can see here, this is how we often find a good way of laying out an application. So first of all, we've got this section here, the assets. So we've got the app icon, splash screen, loading, uh, animation. Uh, we've got the intro pages, the login pages, the post login pages, um, the tab menu, and then the main sort of app pages, and then the paywall pages. So if I just sort of, what I'll just do now is to show you some of the, the uh, annotations that we do use in Bravo. So, so you can see we've labeled the asset with this icon, and splash and loading. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and again, the intro is intro once and no menu, because obviously you don't want the menu on uh, for uh, the intro pages. And this is just, intro once means that it'll only come on uh, just once the first time you, you install, the, where you, you log in for the application. Um, and then login. You can see here, we've got a login page. Uh, there's also, let me just have a look at that. So you can see that it's got it's like a post login action. So what it's saying is uh, once I log in, I want to see, do a post login action to see if I need to do um, the, the, the piece after login. So we've got the intro, but there's also post login, which is quite useful for some things. And then in here, we've got an email field and a password field and a login button. We'll send it with Google. And this is connected up with Firebase. Um, again, I'm not going to go through that now. I had to do that. We've got other tutorials for doing that, but just want to show you the, how the general pieces fit together. Uh, ability to reset password using Firebase, um, sign up. Um, all those pages are there. And then if the post login uh, 
condition will make sense um, then it will come over to here we've got a, a page for checking if you want to do notifications uh, to be enabled this is really useful for facility of the Bravo users to be able to actually set notifications to mobile devices which you obviously can't get with a normal web application uh, so that's really important and then um, really sp very useful for uh, getting profile information so after someone logs in for the first time we can redirect to a post login page so they can submit and update their profile so for example they might want to log in but you want to then say okay just the first time i want to get your name and your birthday for example and use it as part of your customization um then moving down the app itself this is fairly straightforward uh, in terms of what we normally have we've got a, a slider here of categories and then a, a list of um, items which will come from our database we've got a skeleton page to help with loading to make it look better uh, which is just to re replicate the same structure um, and then the detail page of uh, sessions and I think or also of sounds as well. So basically the list of sounds would be uh, populated here and the list of sessions is populated here. Um, we've also got a search page and a list of the bookmarks. If someone's bookmarked, I think we can see that if I go to the detail page. Uh, actually, maybe the sessions. You can see there's a ability to put a bookmark in here. Um, uh, and so you can and we have we've got some functions later on that let you um, make that activate or not so that you can know if the users bookmark that and add it to their account and then there's a profile page an editing profile and then some general information so pretty standard stuff in um, the main application the other piece uh, that's worth talking about just briefly we'll get to it is the paywall so you know going to the upgrade it goes to this paywall screen uh, and then on success or failure, we get the two other screens. And then this will then set the state of the user so that you can then make conditional content appear for them based if they're a subscriber or not. So this is a great thing to have to ensure that, um, you know, you're, you're really trying to um, get, get the value of your, your users who are using your content. So that's basically how the design is put together. Um, a lot of the core of it's standard Bravo things, but some of these other things, uh, you know, can be really powerful when they're included, you know, particularly post login and, and the in-app purchase. Okay, so on to the next step. For this next part, um, I want to have a look at uh, base row. So base row and it's and the URL is base row .io, is a is a SaaS tool which is very similar to um, Airtable and how it works. Um, and for the meditation app, we've created uh, a database with four tables. The first one's meditation, and what this is doing here is we're kind of just listing all of the meditation audio. So we've got the title, author category, uh, whether it's in the featured list an image to be displayed. We actually contain the audio file as well, which is quite nice ability to do that. And then this field here uh, is, is basically a calculated field off the featured um, display active or default. And what that's going to be, what we can use that to is to bind that to the, um, the, 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 the state so it enables us to be able to display it or not the, the variant uh, whether it was featured uh, so again we can uh, link to so that in the description of this video but um, the ability to create the active or default tags which can be bound enable us to you know use the variance in figma and be able to have that multiple state within the actual application which is really handy um, and I think that's all of the main fields in that table. Sounds similar sort similar things here, author category, title, image, and audio files. Um, the other table is the user info table where we've got the um, user ID, we can store in the device ID, um, and then information that's been stored in the, when as part of the post login process. So we've got a we've got a, a form in the post login which, which is, updates this to add in there. Uh, completes all their, all their profile information, basically. Um, finally, we've got the user bookmarks. So here, what we're storing is for each user ID that logs in, um, 
you know, what are the things that they've bookmarked so that we can tie that back. And if you look at the, what we're doing here, comparing here is the, the user ID is, is, the, is the thing. These user IDs, these long ones are the ones coming from um, the login with um, uh, Firebase. So that's how that works. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, what we can do, the great thing about uh, base row is that in the same way that um, uh, the uh, Airtable has really good APIs, base row also exposes all the data about APIs. So it's pretty easy to generate the APIs to um, connect up to this data to be able to bind it into Bravo. So base row is a really good alternative to Airtable um, if you don't want, if you're not really stuck with that, uh, as it allows you to do very similar things. Okay, on to the next one. Next, I'm going to talk about Napkin.io. Now, Napkin, we, this is not something that we talk a lot about in Bravo uh, up to now, but it's actually been really useful for us for a few um, sort of functions that we need to do. What Napkin.io does is uh, it lets you easily create um, what's called sort of cloud functions, so functions that, that operate in the cloud and really, um, you know, acting as a, a way of connecting and dealing with APIs. And sometimes in Bravo, particularly with tools like Airtable or Base Row, you get data in a format or it doesn't quite do what you need it to do to interface with Bravo. So um, we use things like an app Caneo to try to transform the data as the API request is being made uh, to make it uh, into the format that we need. So, you know, where Airtable doesn't quite do what you need, Napkin.io can kind of help to just tweak the, the data. This is really getting into sort of code territory so I wouldn't say it's really no code but it can be useful if people have a rough understanding of code to be able to take existing functions and tweak them for their own needs so um, we have a few functions here we're using I just talked through them um, we've got a function here post login which is there to check if the user has been already created and if not it forces the post login process to, to carry on uh, list bookmarks is really um, some, uh, 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 an API endpoint that lets that allows the um, Bravo to query the bookmarks, which isn't possible directly with base row the way we set it up. Um, delete bookmarks and bookmarks are also to do with this. So delete bookmarks, delete from bookmark, and uh, bookmarks list the bookmarks for a user, and then categories provides all the categories. I'm not going to go through all of them in detail because it's, it becomes a bit more. Uh, a, bit, you know, a bit more detail around the coding side, but I think it's important just to give you a rough idea of how it works. Um, so looking at this function here, again, I'm not going to explain it, but I'll just uh, in super detail, but I'll broadly show what's happening. So what happens is um, Napkin provides you with the URL when you actually make a function. And then you can write code that can then play on that uh, URL. Um, in this instance, it's what it's doing is it's um, hit, Bravo is hitting that URL. Uh, it's hitting it with a header, um, and and then this Napkin function is then uh, making another request based on that header. Uh, and then if it, what it's doing is saying if it's got something, then um, the user is already in the table, so don't show post login. If it hasn't got anything, show the post login, and then anything else will show post login. So really all this is doing is it's basically making another request to see if the user's already complete the post login table, and then it's either going to it or not, depending on what the results are. So this, you know, this isn't something we can directly get from uh, base row, but by adding this in, uh, you can actually provide that extra functionality. Um, and Napkin's really cool because it does something like, like this if you understand coding or want to get your hands dirty a little bit. I'll share this link to this so you can use it yourself um, for this particular function. Um, but it's also free and it, you know, it works for, you know, as long as you don't do too many requests, it can be really handy to fill in some gaps in, in what you need to do. So it's a, it's a pretty good tool to use and it's something we use a few times in this particular application. Okay, on to the next tool. The last tool I want to talk about in this video is Revenue Cat. Now, Revenue Cat is a great tool to enable you to kind of bring all of your uh, information together right, dealing with in-app purchases. And it also, uh, we've integrated with Bravo so that you can uh, set up Revenue Cat and it will actually then do all the work dealing with the app stores uh, in both um, 
uh, Google and Apple. Normally this is a lot of work um, and uh, it's you know not something that it's easy to do but revenue cap really makes it a lot easier um, and just to give you a rough idea of what happens you know you set your app up uh, you put the information in for the app ID um, but more importantly you know you set your um, product up so you, you once you once you get your app ready to go into the app store you can put in the identifier of the app uh, and then you can put up your products in there and the prices and then that enables you um, to uh, you know, basically collect revenue from this, and, uh, and revenue cap kind of manages all of that process, dealing with the actual, you know, setting up the connection and and and, and doing the payments, um, well, providing the payments through to Google and, and Apple, um, and it means that you can collect um, in a purchase um, really easily in your application. Okay, I think that sums up all the different pieces we want to talk about today. Uh, so um, let me just wrap up. Okay, and so this is the final application. This is running on my mobile device, so you can see the whole piece. There's a category as a slider pulling from the base for database. You can see the different features uh, with the um, uh, tags are listed um, uh, and I guess the other main thing you've got the bookmarks the ability to look at the bookmarks that have been selected um, and the profile which we, we mentioned as well and then if you go back to the home screen if I click on upgrade that kicks off the um, paywall process to unlock so your content and pressing the button to actually do the in-app purchase, which is really fast. Um, so, as you can see, using a few tools, um, you know, you have to. Uh, uh, it, it adds um, a little bit more work, but what the beauty of that is is you can switch these things out if you need to use something else. You want to use a different database, it's easy to do that. If you want to use a different way of authenticating, you can do that too. Um, so, with Bravo. What we try and give you is the flexibility um, to do exactly what you want to do um, and allow you to have that. And by providing the connectivity, you can do that. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, we can do more videos on, on building with Bravo so you can sort of see how to build more complex applications. Um, see you next time. Thanks.